Cincinnati's riverfront. It's one of only six steam-powered boats still operating today. Built in Scotland in 1926, the Delta Queen now makes her home in Cincinnati. Welcome back to our condo by the river here. This is Tall Stacks 88. Now, coming up now is the first story produced by the students of the University of Cincinnati. With each of these stories, you will see the name of the student who actually produced the spot. Now, this story, this first story, gives us the background of why riverboats were so important to the history and growth of Cincinnati. Our city's first means of transporting anything by river was a flatboat. During the flatboat era, beginning in 1789, agriculture was the primary occupation. As the settlement expanded, we saw a surplus of products for export, which were sent downstream to New Orleans. The flatboats were then broken apart, and the lumber was sold to build houses. With the keelboat came improvement. While flatboats were capable of downstream travel only, the keelboat could be pushed against the current by one strong boatman with a long pole. It took a month to go downstream and three months to return. The river travel was not always possible. In the summer, the river was only inches deep, and in the winter, it was clogged with ice. And at last came the bygone era of the steamboat. The steamboats had one specific purpose. They were invented so that people and freight could travel upriver as easy as they could down. Here in Cincinnati, during the early 20th century, the riverboats were born out of the need for people to travel from Pittsburgh to Cincinnati, on to Memphis, and then New Orleans. Cincinnati became a prominent shipbuilding place. Nearly a fourth of the vessels built on the western waters were launched right here. But Cincinnati's greatest era of development was when the river navigation was of the utmost importance. Our Queen City exceeded all other places in the west in number of boats. It was claimed, in fact, that no other place in the world had built more. From 1811 to 1829, out of a whole number of 314 steamboats built on the western waters, 81 had been built right here. For the year 1826, the imports were valued at over two and a half million and the exports over one million dollars. Most of these were carried to the West Indies and South America. Our highest export item of value was flour at $165,000, then whiskey and pork over $100,000 each. Cotton carrier Henry Frank was a record-setting boat. At New Orleans in April 1881, the Henry Frank brought in the largest number of cotton bales ever carried on a single hull. She carried 9,226 bales plus 250 tons of general freight. Built in 1902, the towboat Sprague was the largest sternwheel vessel of her type in the world. She was designed to tow coal between Louisville and New Orleans. The Sprague set her own record in February of 1907, hitched to 56 coal boats and four barges, which contained 67,000 tons. She handled the greatest cargo ever in marine history. The Tom Green was originally built for passenger use, but in 1936, the passenger cabins were removed to make room for automobiles and general freight. Her trades were with the companies between Cincinnati and Louisville. She was named for Tom R. Green, who took control of the boat after his father, Captain Gordon Green, died in 1927. One of the most dearly loved excursion riverboats in Cincinnati was the Island Queen. She served for the old Coney Island Amusement Park as transportation from the public landing. The fare? At one time, only 25 cents. The second Island Queen was destroyed by fire in Pittsburgh on September 9, 1947. Coney Island never ran another boat. This boat, once designed and built to carry cotton, began one day to carry people. The Cincinnati-based Natchez was perhaps one of the very first pleasure boats, accommodated for people rather than cargo. Early residents of the Ohio Valley depended on the river for personal travel. It was, for a long time, the only way to go. Businesses were quick to see big profits from the riverboats. Some were very luxurious with elegant state rooms, fancy dining saloons, glittering bars and lounges, gambling rooms, and even music and live entertainment. The calliope played a lively melody which echoed for miles around. Jazz music was introduced and spread by steamboat from New Orleans, as well as those classic Stephen Foster tunes from Kentucky. The elegance of the riverboats reached an all-time high as they earned their new exotic name, Floating Palaces. Here's what was considered the most luxurious boat on the Ohio.
built in 1867 at Pittsburgh, the Grand Republic was so beautifully designed, her pilot house was constructed with stained glass windows. She was completely destroyed by fire in 1877. If all this talk about floating palaces sounds vaguely familiar, it should. Today, there's some of the hottest entertainment spots for many Cincinnatians. Perhaps the only real difference between then and now is that most floating restaurants today are securely attached to the ground. Maybe we learned this lesson the hard way in March of 1910 from the Virginia. She found herself drifting away after being docked for the night. The next day, when floodwaters receded, she was discovered stuck right in the middle of a cornfield. The Virginia was finally saved when a canal was dug especially for her. Although stationary, these glittering palaces today are very much a modern version of the glamorous boats we just visited from the past. Though riverboat entertainment has changed drastically over the years, Cincinnati still holds firm to one very old and honored tradition. Our showboat Majestic is still a very honored form of entertainment in our community. With a high bid of $13,500, Cincinnati snatched her up in 1967, giving her a brand new life. Showboat Majestic is now permanently moored at the public landing, adding more nostalgia to our city. The highlight of the summer was a salute to some familiar faces of Cincinnati. The showboat presented Queen City Toast to celebrate our bicentennial winged hogs and all. Now the Delta Queen is a flagship for the Tall Stacks, and on Friday afternoon when she arrived on board was a group of very special people. They were the group called Show Boats Are Coming, a musical review group, and they entertained the rest of the crowds when the boats arrived. 